Well, welcome to session whatever of this undertaking. What? Let me go ahead and say what I've been pondering for the last week and then offer the rest of you to offer thoughts about what's been on your mind about this for the last week. If, if this is correct, which I know it's not completely correct, but just if it was correct and you couldn't use it to explain things to other people, it would be essentially worthless. Okay. So my, my ongoing pondering has to do with how, how do you take what we have come to understand and simplify it to a point where, or to a degree where you can explain it to someone else in a meaningful manner, so it's meaningful to them without overwhelming them, and and not not actually throw away, but but hide some of the understanding that we have developed that is relevant but not relevant at that point. If if I ask an architect to design me a house, he doesn't usually tell me how to make bricks and grow trees, okay? Now, both of those things are relevant to some extent, but not for my house. If I was going to build 100,000 houses, then how do I grow trees and make bricks is probably relevant. So that's, that's what continues to bother me in terms of how to do something with this to get to a point where we have something that's usable because I don't think this is. So now I'll open it up for other, because that, that's my two cents. Who would like to go next? Okay, let me make a couple of points or suggestions on that. The first one that comes to my mind is when you talk about building a house with the architect, you're not actually building the house. You've hired a contractor or other people who have that knowledge that you're saying you don't need, but somebody in the system has that knowledge. So I don't think if you were actually out on a desert island and you were trying to build a house out there, you would have to have some idea how bricks and other things work together. You couldn't just say that it is only, you know, conceptual knowledge. You'd actually have to know how to do that. The other thing that came to my mind over the week is it's often been mentioned in our conversations that it takes five years or so to reinvigorate a regeneration farm they go from a factory farm to one that's organic and regenerative and make it so it produces maybe we need to think of our system as the same way there isn't going to be any one yellow brick road to Oz solution that's going to come up with anything maybe it's going to be we're going to have to go through step-by-step -step process and tell people okay this is what you need to think about in some ways, we get to get people to unlearn things before we can get them to learn things. Okay. Well, I like that. That I, I like that. If I to if I could work off of Brian's thing, um, I like to think of this as trying to reframe uh, our mental model of what an ecosystem is. And to, just like we have different layers of zooming in and out, we have multiple mental models within a matrix rather than one simple, one mental model. And I, I pick on chiropractors here, where all you see is nails. Well, say that again? Well, chiropractors tend to see all problems all your problems to be related to your spine well, no. all they need is one hammer and one nail. Whereas if you have me multiple mental, mental uh, matrices of understanding, mm -hmm. then, then you mer those are relevant in different scales of time or different venues of 
of how we zoom in and out of this, this matrix we have here or this model we have here. And, and even within that metaphor, then you end up with sometimes, like when we got six of us in this room right now, the need to be able to see intermediate uh, opportunities within a flow of time, which means that we are, could all be like a catalyst but not just one catalyst, but multiple catalysts working on forming those intermediate process to get to a better ecosystem. So the metaphors then become the idea that we are trying to be catalysts to, to influence change, but oftentimes we can't see the intermediate processes that are available to make this happen. And that that requires that requires uh, in organic chemistry it requires being able to see these intermediates even though they don't even they don't exist except in that duration of time that that most people don't see. Well, that I think, doesn't that relate to what Brian said in terms of yes. um, if I if I hope <laughs> so. <laughs> If I hire the architect to build the house, to design the house, I'm not going to build the house. I'm going to have the, the people come in and do the foundation and the framers and the people that do the roofing and, and, the, and the facing and the people that finish the inside. And they're the ones that know the detail that is not, it's not in the print. In other words, the print is, is the design of it, but the individual subcontractors know how to affect the detail that's not in the print. Right. And that, that is always the case. There's always, there's always distance between whatever the diagram you have up in front of you. And that's, that's the role of being able to visualize those intermediates. Well, okay. So, so, um, Brian sent out this link to this video by, by Jessica Flack from um, Santa Fe Institute. And there was a statement in that video that I picked up on. There were several of them that Brian picked up on and he posted most of them. They <laughs> emphasized the regularities or the essence, not the details. So my thought is that what we're looking for is what, what is the essence of this picture that can be communicated and, I, and I'm being redundant. So I'll stop. Somebody else. But Gene, you, you call yourself a storyteller, right? Uh, I've been thinking about storytelling. Mm -hmm. um, when people tell stories, they typically want to convey some sort of message about um, a behavior they want to emphasize or a behavior they want to have less of um, by offering some sort of moral guidance. Uh, at least a lot of stories have that, uh, that type of uh, approach. The, the question I think we have to ask ourselves is who are we telling the story to? And what kind of behaviors are we trying to um, to impact with that uh, that storytelling, because that impacts how you emphasize certain aspects of the system versus others. And and I agree with that. And I would say that that there are multiple no, there are different stories for for different um, stakeholders in in this puzzle. So that there's a story that's meaningful to the local community. There's a story that's meaningful to, to the factory farmers. There's a story that's meaningful to the, the local farmers. There's a story that's meaningful to the big box retailers, to the people that go to the, um, the farmers markets. So that the... The article that was sent out that was written by the group that was doing the stuff in North Carolina, and they, when they, they said that, that the whole endeavor was meaningful to the stakeholders because they could see their relevance 
amidst the larger puzzle so that there was there was a sub story that right. that they connected to and the sub stories typically mm. are the loops right so when you are talking about relevance for specific stakeholders you usually see their relationship or their particular experience in certain loops, right? Right. Yep. So, right. so that I guess that's the that's the thing. It's it's about which are the loops that are relevant to specific stakeholders so that you can turn into a story that is more meaningful for those stakeholders. So so if I, if I took your comments and related them back to the model I built about the boy who cried wolf, Aesop's fable, mm -hmm. there's, there's that story to be told from the boy's perspective and that story to be told from the townspeople's perspective. And somebody sent me an email one day and told me that story from the wolf's perspective. <laughs> <laughs> Which, which I had not even considered, but it was actually relevant to consider yeah. that story from the wolf's perspective. Yeah. Uh, so, depending upon which stakeholder you're designing the story for, you might start in a, in a very different place mm -hmm. for the story. Uh, in other words, we, we start we sequence these loops to sort of unfold it in the order that we decided that it made sense based upon what it was that we were attempting to attain, which was local sustainable food system. Though if we um, wanted to tell a story to um, local growers, we would, we would start the story somewhere else, I think. But these loops are also ordered now in not only sequence, but also in the categories, economic, uh, system knowledge and awareness, community health, ecological, that is, there's an underlying structure there as well in the order. Not off this map, but off the relevant uh, uh, factors map, which is basically the same map, except that I made a few changes. It, and that, and, and by by the conversation or the stories, the perspectives get gets changed and inter interrelated in a way that would not be possible without hearing one another's stories, particularly right. the wolves. Gene, it's the map above relevant production factors, carbon sequestration. Right there. This relevant factors map. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, and, and the point that uh, Robert just made, we, we found out when we took a look at um, uh, loop 12, which we found was redundant, but then when we, when we got rid of the whole thing, we found that we messed up loop 9, so. Well, uh, 12, is, 12 is now gone because. But the more the conversations go, the, the more in, the more of a fact that that is not a, a matrix or late uh, lattice it's a it's a dynamic process oh definitely it's a dynamic process yes yeah. you're always going to screw it up oh, yeah yeah it's always being messed with what, what, what do you mean messed with well but like he said by by having a conversation or looking at it from a different point of view well that's by sharing that across different different points of view it's going to change everyone's point of view. And so that's good. I mean, it's always dynamic. It's I not. Think, yeah, but there's still going to be patterns that are going to stay set. Right, so right. Almost entrenched. Well, uh, into, but they, but we do get transformational changes once in a while. It, yeah. And that that's great. It's just inconvenient for the mapper. Right. <laughs> the problem with the transformational changes is do we reach the tip of point tipping point we're looking for or did he simply oscillate and basically the power structure stays in place the power structure that's existing now is extremely uh resilient right 
right, exactly. But your goal is is to change that oscillation over time. Yeah. yeah. So to to key into that, back to the video that that Brian posted the link to by Jessica Flack. The other statement that I keyed was, "Power changes more slowly than signals." Yes, isn't that a great statement? Mm -hmm. That was a great comment. See, I actually watched the video. <laughs> Good. Good. That one might be a uh, a reservoir, right? It's not that field that has things that accumulate. Right. And the metaphor out there now is only through those dynamic interfaces of interference with one another do you get new ideas emerge. It's the interference patterns of the different conversations that create new awarenesses by capturing, uh, by capturing it in, in interference patterns rather than, uh, than structural lattices. But another thought that's come over my mind for the last few weeks, Ross Ashby said that a system is a source of information. <laughs> and so we've got this source of information before us. Problem is though, is that this map, if it were just what we seven or eight of us, I think we got as a, as a total for this group, did, it's only about 10%, maybe even less than 10% of what we've actually generated as far as information goes. We not only have the information on the map, we have information on all the articles we've all put together along here. We have information on all the different ideas that people have put on their own as far as placed here or through separate emails. And we've got information, um, what was the other category I was thinking about before? But there's a lot of information that we have gone through but is not actually captured on the map. And I think that's amazing. Right. And I would say, just to use the metaphor of the frequencies, the, the, because we've been in this room together for so long and multiple points of view, we have created an underlying uh, longer wave pattern that continually flows through that the smaller frequencies come and go. And we carry the memories more so on that, that longer uh, wavelength patterns as a metaphor. Rather other, than, I'm sorry, go ahead. Rather than as a, a static lady, uh, 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 matrix of, of structure, which I think is what Gene's circles signify to me, is a dynamic resonating patterns there. The other sources are these discussions we're having in these Zoom meetings. There's a lot of information. I went over the transcripts from the last meeting, and there was a lot of really good information especially with Robert's idea of community health and agricultural health, which I thought had a lot of meat in it. Thanks. Robert? You want to jump in here, Robert? Oh, I'm still processing uh, everyone's thoughts here. And uh, I, I, I guess uh, just going back to uh, your objective gene in uh, simplifying this i just thought that you know depending on the stakeholders um there's definitely a targeted message on each of them but i think it is important to understand that you know we have to approach this based we we can approach this through their hearts and mind so hearts is like the community health part this is truly about the uh, not just the uh, environmental health, but this is also about the wellness of uh, the society. So I think that message alone is a very strong um, uh, message to appeal to everyone's heart. And in terms of uh, mind, well, I guess the map speaks for itself. The, the, the complexity of it is definitely the uh, mind part of it. I would say at this point in time, this map is what I would call a grass tops map rather than a grass root map. And a, I know a, a grass what? Grass tops. Oh, okay. 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 <laughs> that you've got a, a, a couple of um, comments that you haven't done, 
yet. You got a two down here in the comments icon. And that's probably my uh, the deal with my asset-based community development, right? This is something I've done outside of this beforehand, trying to bridge asset-based community development, especially in terms of community healthcare. And I'm getting to see this more and more uh, as a basis. And one of the stakeholders that is not in this map, which I'm beginning to think more and more should be, is the uh, group that you were talking about a little bit earlier, um, who did the adverse childhood uh, uh, events work. Okay. Um, and that somehow showing that how they are affected by this farming system, which is what I blame a lot of their problems on, and how we are also being detrimentally affected living in urban areas is the story I'm kind of like starting to build up in my head. That we are creating a system of food security generation that is not only hurting the people in middle America, but is also continually failing to provide us the nourishment that we need. And it's not only doing it on a national basis, but it's also beginning to do it on an international basis as well. That's the story I've kind of got in my head, but how you put what's basically a war and peace idea into a novel is something I'm still struggling with. Well, okay, so, so based on the comments, well, what was this other one, this one was? Oh yeah, that, those articles about the about the geobacters that actually live on electricity was pretty amazing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I mean, it's 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 hard to keep up with with all the stuff that gets posted by people, but some of it's really amazing. So the the and to stop there and bridge somewhere else. The thought that I had based upon the comments to this point is suppose this, this is an unfolding sequence that we created based upon the, the loops, okay? That based on where we started with this map to unfold it. Though I made the comment that for different stakeholders, the story that you told them you would unfold in a different way. So suppose that for this one model, you could actually have multiple sequences of unfolding so that rather than, than, rather than have these things numbered, you simply had them labeled and the sequence that you could select them by told told the story so that there were multiple sequences that you could unfold for this model as opposed to just the one that that we've defined here does that yes. yes i like i like the multiple sequencing because because that that is a, a nice metaphor for for stories, how they how they work anyway. You 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 can dance around within different sequences depending depending on what's what's important in the moment or, uh, or in the whole picture. I um, exported this model to Excel. Oh, I heard you say yeah. Okay, and in an attempt to. Um, uh, provide some clarity. <laughs> I was thinking that, uh, you know, uh, various nodes would, uh, I could count up how many references there were for each node, because this has to be in some sort of a database. And uh, unfortunately, there wasn't nearly enough data exported to uh, Excel or Google Sheets for that matter, to really get uh, any traction on that. Um, now, on the other hand, 
Thursday, I went to a seminar in Boulder put on by the law school and participated in by the um, business school on rural entrepreneurship. People from Nebraska, Wyoming, uh, all over Colorado. And when you go to a thing called EIG.org, Economic Innovation Group, uh, they have maps of the entire country uh, where they talk about uh, how much need there is in rural areas. And um, I, I just looked at everybody's LinkedIn uh, profile for where they're from, took the zip code probable of that. Um, and uh, uh, there's a little profile on EIG that I will send, uh, make a composite of and send everybody. Because it says, hey, what we have here, uh, there's a need out there in rural areas. It's called the, um, at EIG, it's called the Distressed Communities Index. There's a need for this. There's something out there that's pulling this forward. Just a suggestion. Well, that, I'll throw this picture, and I don't know if you can see this, but it, it, in reference to, to thinking about here's our world needs as a nervous system, it's kind of a metaphor. This is a, a group of uh, global positioning mappers, folks, but it kind of goes right back to, you know, where you take your zip code and, and, and define some needs in the, on the topic, and then, and then you can map it out. So, yeah, I think that, that, is, that is going on right now. So I, uh, I just sent an email to Alex because I'm pretty sure that I accessed one of his maps in the past somewhere that had multiple sequences in it on drop downs and, and asked him if he can tell me how, which one it was and how he did it. Um, to see if, to investigate whether or not we could unfold. In other words, if I start this in any particular place and, and I develop a story starting from here, so maybe it's this one and then it's this one and then it's this one and this, well, probably not that one because it doesn't connect. And then, all right, so you could tell a story from those three loops from some perspective, and maybe this one, okay? So that if you if you had multiple paths through this, that that particular view is I don't consider overwhelming, because all right, then then if you're presenting that to somebody, and and they ask about other things. You know, you can go look for other things. They want, they want to know about about product cost price. You can show that you actually have that as part of the system here, okay? That it's actually part if you, well, the, but here I'm running into the problem of, of doing things based upon showcasing and focusing because the showcase and focus don't work together. Right. But you don't, but you don't, you, you don't have to tell everybody the whole story unless they're interested. That back to my comment about the architect doesn't tell you how to build, to grow trees if you don't need to know. Or if you're not interested in knowing. I, you know, if you want lumber, go to Lowe's or, or Home Depot or someplace. Buy what you need. And, and the use of clusters seems particularly well suited for that, right? So you can actually cluster a bunch of loops into um, something, a story that's relevant for a particular subgroup. Right. Now, you, you could do it using, using the presentation feature. It, 
Say again. It might not be a bad idea because it's a little bit easier to work with individually. Um, and you can experiment with it. And if you don't like it, you just delete it type of thing. And I'm thinking maybe I'll try that for a couple of things. Then if it's something we like, we just translate that structure into this showcase thing that we're talking about here. The logic of the story works out. Okay. So from, from a presentation perspective, I don't know, I, I think I was just messing around with stuff here. Um, what one might consider, let me get rid of this junk that I put in here. So the way that it, that it works out very well in Kumu is that if, if I go ahead and start here, and decide that that I want to go ahead and, and build from, well, let's do what I was doing before. I could do this, and then I could do another one and do this, and another one and do this. And then when I save the changes and exit, Publish, public. If this doesn't work, don't throw stones because I haven't done this before. Um, ah, it doesn't remember them. Really? Hate it when that happens. Oh, there it's oh, when I change I change all. Okay, okay. Let me start over with a different approach. More trial and learning, sorry. I can do it this way. I can start with No, 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 no. Ah. All right. How do I screw this up? I think you want to pick one of the ones on the bottom, then save it and go back in again and make a new one. Uh, no, because it will it will change it will change the map. Zoom to fit up. somehow. Exit. All right, let me do this then. All right, if I start here, and if I say like 12, and 12, 12 isn't there anymore, 11. If I select this, and I do a focus, okay, all right. Then I create another one and I do tilde. I get it all back, hold this and select this, do zero. I now have both of them. And if I do another one, hit the, the um, back quote key and hold the shift and select this and then focus. Oh. Okay, so I could unfold that story piece by piece by piece. I would just have to sort of have a sense of 
of how I was going to unfold it before I started, but in terms of creating the presentation itself from the, the larger picture, it's actually amazingly easy in, in Kumu to do that, um, simply because of the, the shortcut keys, so that you can, can select something and tell it to focus on that and and when you go from one step to another in the presentation, what have I done to this? It allows you to keep it. That's weird. You know, this reminds me of like what I've done a PowerPoint presentation for a group. And then I go back and pull, look at the PowerPoint I presented and then say, oh, I don't want this one and this one. And I, I change the sequence or change, change it for the next group. I'm presenting the same idea, but it's, but it would be a different PowerPoint because the, the slides are different interests or not of any interest at all. Right. But by, by having the one story like you're doing, well, then you can go back and reframe it for the next group. Or do it all, do something completely right. different. Put, putting, putting together a particular story doesn't have any impact on the model itself. You're just choosing which parts of it to present. And, and you know, I've developed a lot of presentations this way. And I think it works quite well um, for the things that I've been doing lately because I only wanted to unfold them in one way. The, the showcase has worked very well. So I don't even have to create the presentation. But in this case, I think the presentation of multiple of different stories from different perspectives is appropriate based upon who you want to present it to right and and you in in this presentation you could show parts of this along with parts parts of this map and parts of this map all right you're not you're not limited to one particular map you can put anything from any of the maps in the project in the presentation and as was probably apparent in here you can develop as many presentations as you need to off of that project as part of the project you also don't have to use necessarily the narrative that's in the map for the element or the loop you can put additional text in uh, correct all the different story if you want to right so so right now gene i'm in the process of building a wiki for uh, on on the power of duration of time and there's an inner circle we call it that we're building the wiki and and we're get so involved kind of like this group where we're we're so interested in how we're reframing our own knowledge that we get embedded within just our own little wiki but then but then we get things like what brian said where oh i think post-traumatic stress syndrome fits into that. Well, then we reach out, which we call the outer circle, and try to draw them in, but there's no way they're ever gonna catch up with what we're, what we're doing without framing it in a way that they can appreciate all the complexity we have in the inner circle. So, so we try to create those nuggets to bring like a post-traumatic stress syndrome group into seeing the power of duration of time and then hopefully hope that they uh, see the time to emerge within our inner circle. And so the, the wiki goes back and forth from the inside, uh, inside consciousness of the, of the inner group to the outside consciousness of the other people we're trying to bring in. That was one of the most interesting things I found about what you said, Robert, about the last time, about the 1920s and the change in time consideration and, and 
especially when you consider the fact that that's when quantum theory started coming in mind. And then just after that is when you really start seeing systems thinking through bird and play and others come into the being too. It's like you're crossing wires at that point in time. Right, right. And it, yeah. And there was also another sequence in that video by, by Flack, where it was the cover of Time magazine, where in the first one it showed this person operating a big mainframe computer. And then in the next picture, they were operating a mini, and then they were operating a laptop. And in the last frame, the person was just plugged into the wall. There was, there was no equipment whatsoever. The person just lit up. <laughs> with, with, a, with a quantum computer with, a, with super positioning of the particles. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> so, so could several of us take different stakeholders an attempt to develop a sequence. You don't have to build a presentation. We can do that collectively when we get back together, but take a stakeholder and, and look at this and say, okay, if I was going to talk to uh, a, a factory farm, how would I, what sequence would I present pieces of this puzzle to them to, to have them develop a sense of a larger reality or to a, a um, big box grocery or um, the, um, individ the small local farmer or, or people in the community. I think we have, oh, and then the, and then the government. Who wants, who wants to build a story to tell the government? <laughs> I'll take the post-traumatic stress syndrome group. <laughs> There's no post-traumatic stress, stress syndrome group here. Well, that's what Brian was talking about. <laughs> uh, yeah. Personally, I'd rather do it through a presentation. I'd rather experiment using presentation mode as a means of developing my ideas. Well, you are probably fluent enough in Kumu to do that, because I've already seen some of your presentations. Uh, others might not be, so I don't want to say that that it's essential that you do it this way. If if you simply wrote down a sequence of well this loop and then this loop and then this loop, um, that would and from that we could craft the presentation in two or three minutes. Yeah. Yeah. All, all you would need to write down is is the numbers of the loops. You wouldn't even have to write down all of the 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 label for it just I want to display 24R and then 23B and 27R and 13R. Okay. I'm not hearing a lot of volunteers. Oh, <laughs> I'll be doing stuff. You do what? I'm going to be doing. I'm I'm going to try. I mean, basically, my approach to this is expo experimentation and exploration, and I've got some ideas I want to develop. So. I'll be busy. I'll okay. do some trial and error here as well, Gene. You'll do what? I'll do some trial and error here from my end too. Uh, well, okay. <laughs> trial and learning. Yeah. Uh, well, okay. So even even if you're not familiar, overly familiar with Kumu, you can go here. You all have access. You can go here and create a new presentation, and and you can putz around with it. The, the one thing that I would strongly advise is don't delete anything. I mean, you're, you're playing with the real presentation here. What, and what, what you're doing is you're choosing to display parts of that presentation as opposed to all of the presentation. All right, so that you can change the size and you can move around and you can select select this mm -hmm. and and then you can tell it to focus that piece and change the size and then that becomes that presentation slide 
but but please don't delete anything. Well, don't delete anything and don't move any don't move any of the pieces because if you move the pieces, they will move on the actual project itself. You can I'm move multiple learning curves anyway, so I will. Uh, what's what's one more, right? What's one more? Yeah. So so Gina, I, I'll I mean I I really did mean that post traumatic stress because I think, uh, and that could merge into the government. I don't know how, good, uh, but the idea of, <coughs> of the idea of of the the affordances of a child eating potato chips in the school lunch program creates a creates an idea of of how important it is to uh, to put food in the cafeteria at a young age that that builds on that value so that uh, so it's not just what we say it's it's how we set the table and the government has a big big part in that so aren't you unfolding this from a community health perspective yeah right I was just kind of right I was trying to uh, you know I'm unfolding I'm it within what are the nuggets to to bring in the government into the idea that uh, post traumatic stress syndrome is real and 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 even how we we set the table becomes an important factor on community health that that cascade across across the whole system mm. and, and and that post traumatic stress syndrome is based on the uh, involuntary memories that we have embedded within the duration of time as we grow up as a child and into our adulthood. And if those affordances are, are part of, of how we grow up and learn, then, then you can see why it's so hard to break the structure that we have right now, because there's no value put into the the uh, food process that is that can be appreciated beyond potato chips and pot. Right, you're you're talking about the the community community the community health has to go ahead and and have an impact on public or the, the a desire for community health. There has to be a public awareness. It's um, for, um, right, okay. and it becomes important for uh, those interested in post-traumatic stress syndrome or in mental health to appreciate not only uh, bad uh, memories but good memories, and and the role of creating good memories even for the government on how <laughs> people look forward to a healthy environment when they they're not getting a, a meal at home. And so you know, so you can continually build on the idea of of avoiding post traumatic stress syndrome by be, by creating positive loops of affordances, they're called. And those affordances are are what are carried on those long wave pattern that we were talking about that develop in a community over a period of time, that are built up and resonate and and become more than just a little, oh, do I get this bag of potato chips now or not? It becomes more of a cultural awareness that there's something better on that table to get this. Robert, you should start napping with it. It's very interesting. Say again, Brian. I think you should try mapping it, making a system map of what he's talking about, but because it sounds like an interesting concept to me, but I don't, you know. I have a hard time visualizing it in my head, but I got an idea what he's talking about. Well, that's what I'm trying to do 24-7 on another wiki. <laughs> <laughs> it, because it, it, it requires a, a change of, of understanding of the importance of that duration of time that starts when we're young and how those affordances affect our outlook of the whole dynamics of the system. I, I agree with Brian. I want to see a map. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you 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 walked yourself right into this, Robert. Okay. You, you need to build a map. So, Robert, if I understand this so well from what you have described, this is about how our brain has been wired. 
all throughout our experiences. And right. how we could, yeah, yeah. Okay. And, yeah. And the illusion is that it's wired. It's not wired, it's interface. Go ahead, say that again. It's not wired, it's interfaced. It's not, it's not a bunch of matrices of mental models. It's interference patterns of mental models. It's not hardware, we do, software. To, we use, we use the, we use the, the analogy because we're captured in this flow of time. We use the analogy of the systems theory in order to understand what we're stepping off of in the next perception action. And, and so, I like the word the interface there because that kind of supports the neuroplasticity of our brain wherein you could probably change the interface. Right, right. And, and it, it would depend on the duration of time that we're capturing that, that wave pattern. We have, yeah. a, we have a, a, because of Gene and putting us in the same room for multiple experiences, you can't put a finger on, on our experience. With a, with a snapshot, it, 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 requires, it requires a story of what we've learned. It, and, and that is the dynamics I think we're trying to bring forward to as an understanding of what it means to be a community and, and how you bring, bring that, that, uh, that awareness, which cannot be captured in a snapshot, can only be captured in a story of duration. So are, are we uh, missing a major stakeholder here in this map? Like for example, schools, universities who could somehow uh, help us uh, pursue certain uh, you know, avenues of this uh, uh, undertaking? I, I think we are, but I think we're missing that post-traumatic stress syndrome analogy I just brought forward because that is captured in the duration of our interactions. And and you know, if, you're, if your life is, is, is rosy the whole time, then let's say you don't have post-traumatic stress syndrome. But if you don't understand post-traumatic stress syndrome, you may think that it can be fixed with a snapshot or a drug, rather than understanding the process that made those involuntary memories come out and work within the dynamics of the system of that person you're, you're dealing with to change their mental model that we have a, a, a presented right in front of us. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so <clears throat> isn't the post-traumatic stress syndrome that you mentioned embedded in community health? Yeah, it's embedded in the whole picture. It's embedded in the whole thing. Because, uh, if, well, but it is embedded in the community health, yes. Yep. Okay. It, it would be a, a pathway to bring them into the conversation. Okay. Now there are there are numerous things that influence community health, though from the context of what we've been thinking about, we have only we have said that the local sustainable food system and public awareness are the two things that influence community health. Uh, the whole infrastructure of the community that influences community health. I mean, the health systems, the the public utility systems, um, the the um, the governmental. In other words, everything that is associated with the community has some some impact on community health. Though I think that we don't add them because it's akin to what I said about the architect telling you how to grow trees. It, it's those dimensions of community health. Are they relevant to what we're trying to understand? That was a, that was a question. Well, I, I hope so, but, but that would re require one to see that, that there, there are affordances or opportunities within systems, including potato chips and carrots. And, and, and you can use the metaphors all over, all over the place because, because the, how we, we view the environment we're in 
depends on our mental model of what we see that is available. If we don't have a mental model of it, or we don't have a community where we share those mental models, then uh, an idea like a, a humor has no, no effect because we would say, you can't make a joke to someone who is not interested in how the community is resonating. So the culture of the, there's a culture of the mental model of the individual, and there's a culture of the community's mental model. And we're, we're building our mental model right here, and we're trying to draw more people from the community into our mental model so that it has value. But without the mental model in the idea that time is always a flow or a process, without mental models, we have nothing. We only perceive an act in the moment. Okay. So it becomes, the more that we can perceive an act, the more we need to capture durations of time to frame the next action moving forward. Okay. So, so should we add another 10 or 15 influences for community health? Well, we could do that. Or, you know, some ways, the more we know about post-traumatic stress syndrome, the more that we see <laughs> that collapses or creates networks within community health intuitively. Okay. okay, so so you just said networks within community health, okay? Right. Um, ba based on that post-traumatic stress syndrome and how it really works. And if you have a question on that, it's the second best-selling book in the on the New York Times right now, uh, The Body Keeps Core by Bessel van der Kolk. And I'm kind of excited because I draw I bought half a dozen of those books over two years ago and tried to share it or whatever it first came out. And I got a lot of blank, huh, look. <laughs> oh, yeah, selling again. So yeah. you, you, you can establish relations to or descriptions of, right? All right? So I'm not saying what, what you're surfacing is irrelevant. I'm, I'm trying to understand is it something that we need to establish explicit relationships of or descriptions of? Community okay. health is its own system. We could draw a whole new systems map about community health. Yes. Yes. Trying to figure out what parts of that community health system we want to put here is pretty difficult. I mean, the other, the other thing, is that made me, Robert made me think about what he was just saying between public awareness and the system's value is another uh, this was another insight from Jessica Black between the difference between accumulation which is what I call public awareness where you all bring our own individual stories together and then aggregation where we make a system's value or what the community is thinking and I think that's also something we need to think about here. But I, I think we can easily get too detailed here and maybe keep on adding so many things that we're going to just get lost in the woods for all the trees. Right. No, and I wasn't trying to add uh, more and more things. I was just trying to add an understanding of one word, affordancy. But that's why we want you to map it, Robert. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, but, to, to Brian's specific point, community health could be a complete system map in and of itself, though for what we are considering that that entire system map is inside of here as opposed to out here someplace. Right. Okay. right. That, that's what I meant by moving from the outer circle to the inner circle. That yeah, the idea is it's all one circle, but but uh, but it, within our conversations, you have to continue the conversation, and pretty soon, uh, a bunch of things get flipped. Oh well, this is all integrated and understood. 
It's just those outliers out there that don't have it. And that was, I think, the metaphor, the analogy we were talking about when, when Kloss talked about Boulder. I mean, th these kind of concepts, I think, would be easier, much easier collapse there than it would be here in my little town, in Winona. Because I know I tried. <laughs> but yeah, it's all inter interconnected. And, and at some point, if, if it's determined that that's relevant, I think it fits so that it looks like this. All right, so that you mouse over and you do this and it shows you the other map, okay? Which is the entire unfolding of that piece as opposed to having all of those added to be explicit on the same level. That was, that was done every single bubble, well, except for these three, each one of these bubbles leads to another loop or set of loops, okay, that describe that particular entity in more detail. Right. <laughs> And still, even though that that was done, this map is is overwhelming, and I had not thought about it before until today. So thank you all very much about creating individual stories or separate stories from the overall map to provide a perspective from different stakeholders' view. That sounds interesting. It, 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 you know, well, in, in my story. Ah. <laughs> sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, it, it, but I, I was just going to say, not to, to, and I'll be quiet. The, the frame, my sister in law, it, uh, it, it's uh, pretty dynamic helping in creating programs for children in schools. And, and what I think of is, if I were to map this right now, I'm thinking of the framework would be from the perspective of a, of a fifth grader who wants to know why there is any value in me eating a carrot, let alone trying one to see if it tastes good or not. And so the, the, if one could, could frame this map for the fifth grader, that, uh, then that, that should be easy for the rest of the community to understand. And so that, that's what, how I think I would frame my, my PowerPoint of these, these ideas here. Okay. Uh, a, a, a nutritious meal based on a, on, a, on, a, on a system of getting food that we just mapped out. If any of the rest of you want to speak, you need to unmute yourself. I muted everybody because there was some feedback coming from somewhere. Yeah, that was me. Sorry. It's okay. I, I didn't know where exactly it was coming from, which is why I muted everyone okay so so each of us will think about different ways to unfold por portions of this for some reason okay as opposed to having particular ones to pursue is that where we got to yes i don't want to start doing anything by thursday uh i don't think we're meeting on thursday but All right. Once I think once a week seems to be about a, a, the extent of the headaches I can take. Um, <laughs> no, I, I just no, agon, agonizing over the state of things and not having a clue as to what to do next. Um, I just didn't want to have a meeting and just go around in circles about nothing. And then finally over the weekend, I actually come up, came up with some, some concrete things that I thought I wanted to talk about. So I had the meeting today. And it, it's not that I am, that I hate any of you. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just, you know, I, I think it's important not to waste people's time and I, I gather that we're not, because you keep coming back. Um, so, and now, as, as you start with a particular stakeholder, 
an attempt to develop a story, you might right, you might say, I want to tell them about this, and then I want to tell them about this, and then I want to tell them about this, and then I want to tell them how all three of them are connected together. Okay? You, you, you don't act, in other words, like I've often thought about the way that they start different movies with several little sub stories and you don't know why they're telling you <clears throat> those sub stories because they don't connect. But then as they get into the movie, they weave all those sub stories together to, to make sense out of them. And, and I think that's um, a parallel in that in terms of how you might sensibly describe a set of relationships to someone else and you tell them about this and this and this, and then you bring them all together. Uh, and it would be nice if when they all come together, there's an aha moment, but that's a, yeah. <laughs> now also, <clears throat> if you, uh, what if you're concerned about breaking anything and you really want to mess around with presentations or anything else, remember that any of you can go here and create a version of this project that belongs to you so that there's absolutely nothing you can break in the original project. You just create one that belongs to you and you can do anything you want to it. I mean, that's, that's one of the things that I really like about this environment. I mean, it's, it's nice to be able to create multiple maps, but sometimes I'm more dangerous than I would like to admit to, so I go mess around in, in a duplicate of the project because um, I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to mess with when I start messing with it. So just a reminder. You you could be as as dangerous as you want to be and not hurt anybody. Does it get any better than that? So, uh, Gene, to create a, a duplicate of this uh, map, I would just fork it. That's it. Yep, it that's will it. it will come up and say, and it will create a new version of okay. this project, and your username will be right here in the URL. Thank you. Sounds good. Uh, and with that, can we depart for today? I think so. Have you had enough? All right. I, I, I thank you all, and we'll see each other next Tuesday and see how we make out with developing some, some different views into this. Because that, that, is, that is a real meaningful surface from today's meeting as far as I'm concerned. Gene, uh, can I say one last thing or, or a little aha that I, I just got? Is Absolutely. That what I realized that I'm doing, uh, I have a circle on the out, outer ring of this where I'm trying to bring in, for example, like the post-traumatic stress and the, the flow of time on a big picture, which I'm connecting the dots on the outer loop but having it, where we are becoming connected in the outer loop for an international conference with the inability to connect to the inner loop that we're working on because they don't see, because it's hard to bring those concepts of the big picture durations of time, post-traumatic stress, psychiatry, et cetera, into the inner loop where, where it has value to the people trying to, get from day to day. And so I got two wikis, one on the outer loop where it's becoming interconnected like the one that we have in the inner. It, it, so it's just kind of an aha for myself mm. that, that it's been quite easy, you know, well, to connect people big picture wise because they're so far down in their, their disciplines that they don't even look outside their window anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can relate to that one really well. Thank you, Robert. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for your time. <laughs> Bye, all. Thank you, guys. I'll Bye. connect with you, John. Bye.